Hi guys, this is Sam and welcome to WingLogic. Today's pronunciation video is another instalment in the Schwa saga, which you can find over here. Last time we saw how strong and weak forms apply to modal verbs, and today we will see how that applies to auxiliary verbs, but only have and do, since I will be making a completely separate video about the verb be. And now without any further ado, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and let's get started. As a quick recap, every language has content words, which are those that your brain needs in order to understand what's happening. They carry meaning and therefore they're fundamental. Everything else is a function word, so these are words that connect others grammatically, but they are not as important. Eat, run, want, buy are main verbs because they express full meaningful concepts and they're therefore content words. Auxiliary verbs, on the other hand, are verbs that help main verbs but are not as important. Have and do can be both main and auxiliary verbs. When they're main verbs, they're always content words. When have means to own or it's used idiomatically, it's always a content word. I have a dog means I own a dog. I'm having a sandwich is an idiomatic use of the verb to have and it means I'm eating a sandwich. When do means to carry out an activity, it's always a main verb. I do my homework means that I am doing that activity and therefore it's a strong content word. As auxiliary verbs, have, do and be create grammar context for the main verb. Have creates the perfect aspect. She has run, present perfect, we had done, past perfect. Do is used to create interrogatives, do you speak English, and negatives, he did or does not know. As we said earlier, when have and do are main verbs, they are content words, and therefore they only have one way of being pronounced, which is their strong form. Have, has, had, do, does. When they're auxiliary verbs, they become function words, meaning that we can use them in their weak forms. The strong a in have becomes a schwa. We don't say, I have eaten, we say, I have eaten, she has eaten, we had eaten. Do and does can become weak and they use a schwa instead, but you can sort of play with it. You don't have to do it all the time. We say, do you eat? Does she eat? But in questions, when do is followed by I, because I starts with a vowel, we actually use a short o in do, and we put an intrusive w in the middle. So we say, do I eat? I will link here a video on intrusive sounds. Did does not have a weak form because it's weak enough as it is. In this conversation, the first have is weak because it simply helps the verb eaten, which is the main one. So we say, have you eaten? In the reply, however, we need to use the strong form for two reasons. First, we can't end a sentence on a weak form unless it's an object pronoun. And second is the fact that now have is on its own. It's implying the verb eaten, but the verb eaten is not there. So in this case, have basically becomes the main verb and therefore a content word. So we say, have you eaten? Yes, I have. Auxiliary verbs are not used in their strong form only at the end of a sentence as a reply to a question, because in English we can use these verbs to imply main ones a lot. If I say to you, you need to finish your homework, you can say, I have, and now I'm going out. In this case, have is strong because it's implying I have finished my homework, in which case it would be weak, but because we're only using the verb have, we need to use it in strong form. Do you like pizza? Yes, I do. I need you to call me and when you do, which stands for when you call me, I'll tell you what happened. 
we can use auxiliary verbs in their strong form even when they're followed by a main verb to create the concept of opposition and emphasis. If I say to you, are you sure you've told him what time we'd be here? You can say, yes, I have told him. In this case, because I'm sort of questioning the fact that you have, you really want to make it clear that you have told him, so it's not your fault. If a colleague says, I don't think he has given me the file yet, you can say, oh, he has given it to you, just check your desk. In that case, you're trying to defend the colleague that you know has done their job properly. In the sentence, you don't like meat, carbs or sweets, what do you like? Here we're using a strong form to create emphasis, surprise and shock and a little bit of frustration maybe. So in this case I know that you don't really like many things and I'm trying hard to think of something that you may actually like and I really don't know what that could be. More opposition is in this sentence. I didn't think you liked chocolate. Oh, I do like chocolate. Now we need to expand on have and had as weak auxiliaries because they can go even weaker than we've seen so far, to the point where we often use contractions I've eaten, she's eaten, we'd eaten, which is the most common option that we use all the time. But if you do want to use them as full words, the perfect and beautiful English option would be to keep the H and the schwa, so I have eaten, she has eaten, we had eaten, but technically you can drop the H as well, so you can also say I have eaten, she has eaten, we had eaten. Although the option of dropping the H is extremely common, as you know I'm a bit of a purist so I tend to keep my H in. The only case where I don't do that is in questions. I wouldn't say, what have you done? I would say, what have you done? In that case, I would remove the H. So, whilst I strongly recommend you keep the H's in as much as you can, especially in English exams, feel free to play with that and see what you feel most comfortable doing. But remember to keep the H when have, has or had are in initial position when they start the sentence. The sentence can only be pronounced as have you eaten, you can't say have you eaten. However, some regional accents will do that, but again it's a regional thing that you don't really want to copy, especially in English exams. But let's look at this past conditional where we have the modal verb would, the auxiliary verb have and the main verb done. In this case, no one, not even me, pronounces the H in have, so have goes not only into have, but we drop the H completely and we only say of, I would have done it. And this is why if you ever text a native English speaker, it's very likely that they will write I would of done it, because the weak form of of is of, exactly like the weak form of have without the H. Some native speakers write it because it's quicker, some others write it because they don't know the difference. But please do not write this in a formal context or especially in an English exam because it's a terrible mistake. Technically, in past conditionals, could, would and should should be pronounced in their strong form with Oh, but you may hear them pronounced weak. Also, the difference between a strong oh and a weak uh, is fairly subtle, so in the speed of connected speech, you may not be able to differentiate them. When we use past conditionals to imply the main verb, we should technically pronounce have in its strong form because it's at the end of a sentence, so this would be yes, he should have, but sometimes native speakers pronounce it weak, he should have. Careful, when we use have in the construction to have to, it never goes weak. We can't say I have to do it. We say I have to do it, I had to do it, and she has to do it. To does go weak, but never the verb have. As for negatives, just like the contractions of modal verbs, not is an adverb, meaning that it's a content word, meaning that contractions do not go weak because they become content words themselves. We can't say, I haven't done it. We must say, I haven't done it. This word should be pronounced as don't with a diphthong O. I don't speak Greek, but it's true that in some very common fixed expressions we reduce it to a, a dun. 
I don't know. I don't like it. But I wouldn't apply this rule to the first sentence. I would never say, I don't speak Greek. You may sometimes hear the negative doesn't pronounced with a schwa doesn't, but we tend to prefer using it in its strong form. And that's it for today. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel down below. And do let me know in the comments if you have any questions and if you'd ever noticed that we use weak forms before today. In the meantime, I will see you on Thursday with my quick vocabulary video and next Tuesday with my video on how the verb be behaves.